Hello, I'm Joe Suarez. I'm an e-learning developer, and this is part two in my video series on the all-new Adobe Captivate. In part one, I talked about it and the differences between version 11 that is now referred to as Captivate Classic. And I want to, in this video, go over why you still might want to use one over the other. So let's just go straight over to the Adobe website here where they have a nice handy table to explain the differences. So like I said, we have the all new Adobe Captivate as they're calling it with this logo and Adobe Captivate Classic with the same logo with a C squeezed in there, I guess. Unfortunately, this is full of a lot of marketing speak and, and fluff. What I'll tell you is that the all new Adobe Captivate is a radical departure from how the authoring tool has done things in the past. Every version up to this point has been a sequential improvement. I think that's fair to say and your older Captivate files would work in the newer version. That has completely changed. Now there is a different file type as you'll see here on this line. So the new files have the extension of .cpt, whereas the old files have .cptx. Yes, that means in the all new version of Adobe Captivate version 12, you cannot open older course files that has huge implications for organizations. This really brings up a lot of questions as far as, well, what can the new Adobe Captivate do that the old one can't? Why would I want to upgrade? What are the things it can't do that the old version could? Does Adobe have a roadmap for when they're going to implement these things that were capable in the old version of Captivate and so on? Adobe gives the impression that they're going to add features to the new Captivate version 12 over time that will allow for things that currently aren't available in it. As you can see, this little asterisk here says these use cases will be added to the new Adobe Captivate in frequent upcoming updates. Now, I will give Adobe credit. They're already on version 12.1, so they are making updates, but as far as including new features. I don't know how long that's going to take. And just to be completely honest, you know, the way that version 12 was developed behind the scenes with long wait times and poor communication on when things were going to come out, Adobe doesn't really have a good track record there. Now to complicate all this even further, let me go over here to this page, which is Adobe's products and technical support page, where they actually list out all their different products, when they became available, the date, the core support for the product ended or is proposed to end and the end of extended support as well. So just going back in history, Captivate version nine was released in 2015. Core support was ended in August of 2020 and extended support ended in 2022. Now here is the thing that is a big deal. Captivate Classic, formerly version 2019 as it was known, build version 11. This first became available in 2018 as it lists here. Core support will end in August of 2026. Now this tells me that every organization has less than three years now to figure out if they're going to migrate to the all new Captivate or another authoring tool. Any old Captivate courses will need to be migrated by this date. I wouldn't wait until the extended support date. And definitely by that point, all versions of Captivate built in previous versions of the tool just need to be off your learning management system or wherever you have courses. So this is a really big deal. Some of us might have lived through the recent end of Adobe Flash back in 2020. Uh, up until that point, many courses were built with Flash as the main engine behind the scenes running e-learning courses. People knew for a long time that Adobe Flash was going away, but also kind of drug their feet as far as getting their courses migrated over and changed into something else. Some organizations were prepared, others weren't, and found out the hard way that their courses weren't working. So to avoid that headache here, uh, I think organizations, this should be a really big wake up call to figure out what you're gonna do with your course libraries that are built in Adobe Captivate. Even if there's something that you know, you're no longer using Captivate, but you have some older courses in your LMS that you're maintaining, uh, you're gonna lose that ability to maintain them come the end of these support dates. I'll put a link in the description below to my website where you can learn more about this transition and what your organization can do to be prepared. That'll be it for this video, part two. In part three, I want to open up the all new Adobe Captivate show you what new features there are and 
just give my impressions, things I like, things I don't like, things that I think are improvements, things I think are going to be problematic, and, and things like that. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel, and I will see you in the next video.